Uh, certainly the fire control system is different. Uh, if you will, it is the ultimate evolution of the series of the B-52 airplane. The cockpit of the B-52 is reminiscent of the older bombers or jet airliners with a massive throttle control for the aircraft's eight engines. But over the years, the instrument panel has changed with technology. The biggest improvements have been in the aircraft's electronics, operated by the crew in the rear compartments. My primary job is working with the uh, radar set of the B-52. I'm also the bombardier. I'm the one who handles the weapons to make sure that they uh, get to the proper location at the proper time. The radar navigator is responsible for operating the radar scope downstairs. He's also responsible for using two television uh, cameras we have downstairs to aid us in bombing. And of course, it is a uh, radar's major job is to get the plane to the bomb site and to drop the proper ordnance on the target. Unlike World War II bombers, which relied on their machine guns to defend themselves, today's B-52s primarily use electronic countermeasure systems for self-protection. I'm part of the defensive team to defend the aircraft against various threats, and that can, can be threats such as surface-to-air missiles or anti-aircraft artillery. To defeat those threats or to defend against them, we use various electronic equipment along with uh, expendables such as chaff and flare systems. Despite its advanced defensive capabilities, the greatest threat to the B-52 would prove to be the march of time. But once more, innovation would come to the plane's defense. In 2002, the B-52 celebrated its 50th anniversary. It's the longest serving combat aircraft in the world, yet it's never been used in its original role, delivering nuclear weapons in combat. Instead, from Vietnam to Iraq, the B-52 has proven itself an invaluable conventional weapon. Shortly before the fall of the Soviet Union, the Strategic Air Command issued a report on nuclear war planning called the Phoenix Study. Citing advances in submarine-launched ballistic missiles, the study suggested that submarines and ICBMs alone could form a nuclear twin triad, with strategic bombers mainly providing backup. With less emphasis on nuclear deterrence, the B-52 evolved into a multi-role bomber. Today, the U.S. Air Force maintains a small force of B-52H bombers configured to deliver a wide range of conventional and nuclear weapons. The concept of the, the man bomber is really because uh, it gives us a lot of flexibility and capability to, uh, to operate in all spectrums of conflict. And although our primary mission here is uh, the nuclear, a B-52 uh, can adapt very quickly to the conventional arena. That's where our training will continue to focus, is the capability to really do both missions. A conventional bombing run requires different training and tactics from a nuclear strike. I think probably one of the more significant differences is the number and variety of weapons that the airplane can carry in a conventional scenario. Uh, typically, uh, in, a, uh, in a standard role of the B-52, we're talking about a one pass, pinpoint, uh, usually one weapon release, as opposed to in a conventional, uh, multi-ships going against a target, uh, perhaps from several different axes of attack, so as to get total coverage and destruction of the target area. Uh, that in itself is a more more difficult coordination process for the air crew and for the other air crews and the other aircraft. The B-52's value in conventional missions lies in two key traits, its heavy payload and its long range. The B-52 has a range of nearly 9,000 miles, but it can fly non-stop around the globe by means of aerial refueling. The innovation of aerial refueling led to the creation of a large fleet of tanker aircraft. 
The KC-135 Strato tanker entered service in 1957 and is strikingly similar to the renowned Boeing 707 jetliner. Like the B-52, the KC-135 has been in active duty for several decades, undergoing continual modification. With the KC-135R model, we have improved the capabilities of the KC-135 aircraft by uh, giving them bigger engines, uh, more thrust available. To refuel, the B-52 pilot carefully maneuvers his aircraft to a precise spot behind and below the KC-135. Then the boom operator in the tanker cautiously lowers the refueling boom. During refueling, nearly 1,000 gallons flow down the boom every minute, a ton of fuel every 20 seconds. The challenges I face is uh, we have uh, any turbulence, weather conditions that uh, prohibit a smooth contact. You always want to get a real smooth contact with the receiver so you don't uh, basically scratch your name in his paint or hit him in any way, windshield. You, know, you gotta fly the boom around, make sure it's controlled real smoothly. You don't wanna overextend to get to a receiver. You wanna keep him pretty close to you, but not too close. We have four pumps we can turn on to use to refuel the aircraft, and it would basically depends on the size of the aircraft. If it's a heavy, we can use all four pumps, a heavy being like a B-52, C-5, uh, whereas a fighter, sometimes we can only use one or two of the pumps to refuel them. It takes usually five to 10 minutes to give them their gas. 